I hope you are well in taking care of yourselves and staying safe. In this lesson, you will learn the importance of financial literacy. And this is an important skill and concepts that you will apply to everyday living and life. The lack of financial literacy can lead you to becoming financially illiterate. You can find yourself accumulating debt burdens and stressful financial concerns. A strong foundation of financial literacy can help support various life goals you have, such as college and buying a home, taking a dream vacation, and managing your debt responsibly. So it is very important that you develop a healthy and disciplined attitude towards your finances. Financial terms matter in becoming financially literate. In this lesson, you'll find terms that are new to you and maybe some that you're familiar with. So below the video, check out the link for the long list of terms that you will become familiar with. It will help you off to a financial healthy start. I encourage you to continue to add this into your financial literacy vocabulary. Money management, budget, banking, credit will end with some financial tips at the end of this lesson. First with money management. This is an idea to a process to tracking and planning the use of your money. The more you make these habits part of your daily life, the easier you'll be able to manage your money. The first step in gaining success in money management is budgeting. Many people don't budget because they don't want to go through what they think will be a boring process of listing out expenses and lining up numbers. But in actuality, it allows you to take total control of your financial money. It shouldn't feel like a punishment. Remember, it's a plan that includes fun stuff too. Think of your budget as two categories of spending, your wants and your needs. Sometimes confusing these two categories can cause more stress. So think of your needs as a place to live, a certain amount of clothing, food, and water. And your wants are those things that make life more enjoyable. The end goal is to ensure you have a budget that will ultimately help you achieve both your immediate and long-term goals. Budgeting can involve making a comprehensive list of expenses or focusing on a few categories. Some people prefer to write their budget by hand, others use budgeting apps. There really is no correct way to do it, whatever works for you. That said, the 50-30-20 budget is a popular model based on your income. 50% of your income are your needs, so that is your house, transportation, basic utilities, 30% of your income are your wants, so distinguishing between your needs and wants isn't always easy and can vary from budget to another. Generally, you want to think of those extras that make life a little bit more enjoyable and are fun, so like your monthly subscriptions or traveling. And 20% should go towards savings or paying off your debt. You want to make sure that you save and have a comfortable cushion so that you can, you can pay and support yourself during unchallenging or challenging times. Budgeting matters. Understanding your relationship with money, tracking your income and expensive, paints a clear picture of how much you have to spend and to save. Save enough for the future. A good budget coaxes you to earmark money for an emergency fund and savings goals like a vacation or retirement. Get and stay out of debt. You wanna make sure you map your spending so you can avoid doing this. It relieves stress. Budgeting is a cure-all and can definitely prepare you for the future. When you're looking at banking, it really doesn't matter if you go with a credit union or a bank because both financial institutions are there to serve your needs. At this point in your life, most students will go with the student-friendly free banking services offered by both banks and credit unions. With that being said, it is important to understand what the differences are. As you can see on this slide, banks are typically more for profit. Anyone can become a member. They tend to have higher interest rates, um, but also offer more diverse products at your banking. A lot of times the credit unions, it's not for profit, and also you can get better rates. Whether you go with a bank or a credit union, the most important thing to do is consider what services that you need. Different situations and needs call for various types of accounts. For example, as a college student, you'll be focusing on your studies full-time and perhaps working part-time. You, you may only need a simple checking account with a debit card and online banking services. 
So let's talk about checking. Checking accounts are regular for making transactions, whereas savings helps to plan for the future. Even though banking is continuously moving towards digital transactions, you will most likely need to write a check once in a while. So note the check on the screen. You will see nine different areas where you need to complete the information correctly. Take a moment now and notice one through nine, how you complete a check. Okay, moving on to credit. Credit is the ability to borrow money or access goods or services with the understanding that you'll pay later. Creditors such as banks, department stores, credit cards, grant credit based on their confidence you are trusted to pay back the bank that you borrowed the money from. To the extent that the creditors consider you worthy of their trust, you are said to be credit worthy or to have good credit. There are three types of credit. First, revolving credit. With a revolving credit, you are given a maximum borrowing limit and you can make charges up to that limit. You must make a minimum payment each month, but otherwise the amount you pay can be any portion of the outstanding balance. If you have a partial payment, you will carry forward the remainder of the balance or resolve the debt. Most credit cards count as revolving credit. Second is the service credit. So when you think about your cable, your utilities, these are companies um, that provide a service to you each month with the understanding that you will pay for them after the fact. The third is the installment credit. An installment is like a loan. So when you're thinking about buying for your student loans or buying a car, you have a set amount that you would pay each month. Good credit is necessary if you plan to borrow money in the future. A higher credit score can mean better interest rates and terms on loans and credit cards. Lenders aren't the only ones who are concerned about your credit your landlords when you try to get an apartment for rent, insurance companies may use your credit scores to determine if what rates you'll have, utility companies may check your credit before deciding to let you open an account or borrow equipment, and even prospective employers may check your credit report for character. Your credit report can be used to verify your identity and other federal laws. Good credit is a tool that can help you buy things you need now and pay for them in the future. So establishing good credit and building up and maintaining that is part of a good financial health. Establishing and building up good credit over time is an important element that you should take seriously. Understanding your credit score is equally, equally important. Credit scores range between 300 and 850. A score of 800 or above on the same range is considered to be excellent. Most credit scores will fall between 600 and 750. Here is a sample of lists on some money tips that will help you in the future with your financial management. You will also want to check at the bottom of this video, commonly um, tips for college students um, that will help you from now until forever. And with a recap of today's lesson, you want to make sure and remember it's important to develop a healthy discipline attitude towards your finances. The first step that you should take is always establish a budget for yourself as a budget allows you to take complete control of your money through thoughtful planning. Budgets will save you money and financial stress. Doesn't matter if you go with a credit union or a bank for your financial services, make sure you find the one that serves the needs that you need to have met. And also it's important that you Make sure that you're aware of your management, management of your money and you plan accordingly so you don't get into financial pitfalls and stressful situations and perhaps even establishing bad credit. Now you have the tools needed to become financially literate.